So you've got a pretty stock standard. It's about as stock standard as you can get set up for, is it frozen? There we go. For this question in terms of its parabola, it's vertex of the origin, x squared equals 4ay. Everything looks normal with the exception of one feature, this guy. So Q, um, uncharacteristically, is not a point on the parabola. Usually we would make it you know, an alternative point on the parabola. Q is floating out here in the middle, and it's divided, uh, it's, it's made from dividing this interval internally in this ratio. Okay? So you guys probably went to the reference sheet at this point. You went to your internal ratio division formula. Um, Back when I taught you that formula, I mentioned that this is not what it looks like. The letters are slightly different, and I believe the numbers are in different order. Double check that. The reason why I write this is just because this is what's burned in my brain, and I think, in fact, the textbook has something similar to this. Whether you use this form or the form that's on the um, reference sheet, it doesn't matter which one, so long as you know which form you're using and you know where to put letters. For instance, for me, I know that the thing that's weird about this is that the ratios, the parts of the ratio are in reverse order up in the numerator, okay? That's the only tricky thing you need to remember about this. Everything else is fine, okay? So you can see my substitution there. Once you've evaluated, you get your 2AT there, plus zero. Um, AT squared plus AT squared, and that gives you the 2AT squared that you need. So part one falls out quite nicely, okay? Part two, I'd like you to help me walk through. What are they asking for? The gradient of? Gradient O Q. So O, of course, is our origin over here. So they're interested in the gradient of that line. We just went and found out where Q was. So this is just a matter of rise over run. Okay? But since we know that since we're comparing to the... Oh, it's moved, of course. Since we're comparing to the origin, this is rise and this is run. Do you see that? So you can write... 2AT squared over 1 plus T squared divided by 2AT over 1 plus T squared. And you can see you simply end up with T, right? Everything else cancels. Which, as a point of curiosity, which is never referred to in the question, which I think is, I don't know why they wasted this result, but anyway. We, we know what the significance of T is, don't we? We introduced the parameter T for a very specific geometric reason. What was it? It's the gradient of... The gradient of the tangent at that point, correct? Which means that these two lines here are parallel. That's kind of, it's kind of nice, which they never use. I don't know why. Anyway, OK, so that's curious, right? Now we come to part three, and the rubber really hits the road. What does the question even mean? This is part of why so few people in the state got this question. Using this result, or whatever else you want, show that Q lies on a fixed circle of radius A. Show that Q lies on a circle somewhere here with a fixed radius of A. Hmm. Now, this is tricky because we don't, <laughs> we, we don't, we have, like, where, where's the circle? Where's the circle? This is actually quite hard to visualize and you have to do a lot of thinking to get there. Um, what we're going to have to do is imagine a fair bit. I hope you have drawn a good diagram because we're going to draw over the top of it. What I want you to notice is I need to get a handle, number one, on, on somewhere where this circle is going to be. Okay? And then secondly, I've got to think about well, what's the best way to prove that the circle really is a circle. Okay? So here is the first um, very obvious question I'm going to ask you. I make it nice and simple to begin with. This fictitious imagined circle, is it inside the parabola or is it outside? This is inside. This is an easy question to answer because by definition you can imagine moving P about, right? Wherever P is going to be, Q will be, it's an internal division, right? So it's somewhere in here, okay? Now where specifically? Well it's not that hard to imagine, all my markers over here, if I were to take the position of P and reflect it across over that way, right? That would make it somewhere over here. I'll call that P2, right? So now if I position this interval again, I guess Q would also be reflected horizontally across. Does that make sense? So I'll call that Q2, right? So, okay, there's a spot here, a spot here. Where else could this go? 
okay? Now, in a moment, I'm going to animate this for you so that you can see literally where it goes, okay? But you need to be able to animate with your brain, okay? Number one, because you will not have access to the tools I'm about to show you. And number two, because poor souls in decades past had to animate with their brains without any such tools. So I want you to imagine, put P somewhere else. This is a really easy spot, okay? Put P like here. Where do you picture Q will be going? Put P somewhere really high up here. Where do you picture Q to be going? Have a think about it. Now I'm going to show you. OK, here's the situation. This is where the diagram started. Okay. Now watch what happens as I move, there's P in orange, as I move P around. What's going on? I'm just going to pause there for a minute. Okay, I'll actually come back a little bit. Hmm. Is that what you expected to happen? Now, this is, um, this is a little bit weird, admittedly, because what defines Q, uh, the green point there, what defines Q is this internal ratio division of 1 to T squared, which is weird. Uh, like, that means the ratio is constantly changing, because T is changing as I move about. In fact, if you're looking closely, um, you can see the value of T right there. Okay? So that means that as I move further down, it's not like, um, it's not like the green dot is always at the midpoint or it's always like a third the way along, it's going to be like 1 to 2, and then 1 to 3, and then 1 to 4. It changes as t changes. Does that make sense? OK. Now, something weird happens when we get to, OK, now I'm just going to pause there. I didn't know that was going to happen. That was just coincidental. Hi, who are you looking for? Um, uh, Rainy. Yeah? Um, Rainy, could you go see Miss Adamo? Now, please. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just get the door behind you when you go, Rainy. Thanks. Something weird happened. Something weird happened. I want to go back to where we originally were. Um, in the original diagram and here, is the green point closer to the focus or is it closer to P? It's clearly closer to the focus, right? But at some point, that changes. At this point, Q is clearly further from the focus, right? Now it's closer to here. Why is that? You don't have to know this to answer the question, but I want you to think geometrically. Why is that happening? Celine? Um, because one of the values of the ratio is a constant. Okay, you've got 1 to t squared. 1 is staying put. But t squared is not. What is t squared now? It's, it's getting small, isn't it? This is like close to a half, so t squared will be like a quarter. So now this is like one to a quarter, or that's an awkward way to say it. I guess we'd say like four to one. Do you agree? That, that's why this is happening, okay? Now, think about this. What will the limiting behavior become? As this gets closer and closer to zero, what do you expect to be happening? This is going to become one to some tiny, tiny things. It's going to go towards zero. I'm not saying actually zero because the ratio one to zero, do, like, well, does that make sense? That means I eat the whole pizza and you get none of it. Like, I don't know what that is. But um, what's happening is we should expect that it's actually going to land. Q's going to land on P. So let's have a look. I'm just going to let it go and do its thing. That's where it came from. OK. So. Do you remember I said before, you need to animate this with your brain, <laughs> okay? You can picture what's happening now. You can picture what's happening. Now you can see the circle, can't you? Can you see the circle? Uh, I have, actually I have stopped um, T from going you know, forever, um, but it would go all the way up, up into here, right? which is actually very, very important for us. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is, let me stop it down here. There we go. This point here. When Q goes through the origin is really, really important. Because I'm, I'm stopping it because it's obviously your brain is it's very hard to picture this thing, right? Where's the circle? Where's the circle? Well, it's somewhere like here, right? Something like that? 